We begin the program, though, with breaking news. RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky says she's retiring after what has been a turbulent year. She's calling it a personal decision to retire, but one that wasn't easy to make. The CBC's Catherine Tunney covers the RCMP for us here in Ottawa, and she joins me now. So, Kat, let's start with what else is Lucky saying about this decision? Yeah, well, in a letter um, that she sent out to, to the, the Mounties today, you know, she's she's emotional, she's, she's even a little bit cheeky, uh, and she's definitely reflective. You know, she, she talks about she was asked to, to modernize um, the force, you know, that, that that is a huge mandate, um, and that she faced some problems. Um, she says, you know, policing in general, you know, the profession is kind of under, under siege these these days. Um, she talks about how she kind of wishes that she had been able to talk um, a bit more about some of the things that she saw. Um, and she says, you know, um, you know, the Brenda in me had to take quite a few hits on the chin at times um, when I needed to stay quiet and not engage in the noise. Right. Okay. So I I legacy here is a complicated one, a real trailblazer, right? The first woman to rise to this office. But in the middle of a lot of controversies over the past couple of years. How do you assess it? Yeah, it's a legacy that, that is marred by controversy. It started, um, you know, as you said, a trailblazer. She was, she is, uh, you know, the, the first woman to, to take on that role permanently. Um, she was given a mandate to, to kind of modernize the force. This came after that, you know, quite shameful um, uh, sexual assault, uh, uh, you know, controversy scandal the RCMP had. There was that apology, um, the settlement, um, and a lot of people, you know, did not like the way that the RCMP was treating its own, own members, it, it, you know, its, its female members particularly. So she was, you know, kind of meant to, to take that over. Um, and since then, there's been a few others. So, of course, um, we talked, you know, she, she, Faced a lot of questions this summer about her political or alleged political interference into the Nova Scotia mass shooting. Uh, the allegation being that the government, you know, leaned on her to lean on her officers um, to release the types of weapons that mm -hmm. were used. You know, she denies that. It, you know, that might not be true. But of course, that has followed her and her legacy over the past year. Um, she, you know, her performance at the public, uh, at the Emergencies Act inquiry also came under question. The fact that, you know, she, she you know, sent a letter to Public Minister, Public Safety Minister Mark Manage. You know, saying that you know there might have been other options to deal with this, um, you know, before invoking the Emergencies Act, but then didn't tell Cabinet wait, right as they were deciding to, to go ahead with that. So it's a you know it, it's a legacy that that is definitely you know has some marks on it. Right. You, you talk about the systemic challenges she faced with the harassment controversies inside the police force, systemic racism, the Mass Casualty Commission, and then her decision to stay silent, uh, which was heavily criticized in particular by Jody Thomas, the National Security Advisor mm -hmm. to the Prime Minister, when she testified at at the. the low commission and I brings me to my next question on timing right like we we've just passed a one-year anniversary of the invocation of the emergencies act we're anticipating judge Rouleau will release his report either the end of this week or early next week and we'll find out what happened I mean just coincidence here? I mean, what do we make of this? Because we know her term was going to be up soon anyway, right? Yes, I mean, the, the RCMP commissioner, you know, kind of serves at, at the pleasure uh, of the government, but, but we have been hearing that, you know, it had been five years. Most commissioners serve about five to six, right. maybe eight, eight years. So, you know, it, it was coming to a natural point where you might question, you know, whether, you know, she was just doing the job. Uh, in her own words, she says that she herself was conflicted about the timing and that she didn't want to be seen as running away. Um, you know, of course, you know, we'll have to have her explain more. Hopefully she'll, she'll give some goodbye interviews. But of course, the fact that we're going to get this report maybe as soon as, as Friday, um, you know, which I'm sure will be looking at the RC, well, it will be looking at the RCMP's response and and seeing, you know, her role if she could have done more. Um, and of course, later next month, actually, I will be receiving the Mass Casualty Commission report. Right. That one is looking into the, the mass shooting in Nova Scotia. Of course, there's been lots of criticism about how um, the RCMP responded to that and if they did enough. Um, so it was going to be a, a hard year for her. So you know. Of, but without knowing exactly what was in her mind, you can see that maybe, you know, maybe she felt that this was time to, to get out. Right, and I think she says her last day will be March 17th, right? Indeed, so that yeah. will be Brenda Lucky's last day as the head of the RSMP. All right, CBC's Catherine Tony. Kat, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you.